welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Um, in this episode we've got all sorts of things co uh, coming up so let's get on with it. If you are lucky enough to have um, spinach beet from last year, um, really now's the time to uh, you know make sure that you keep on picking the uh, the leaves off because basically these plants are going to want to run to seed um, in the next few weeks. So what you need to do is just tear the leaves off um, at the top, and um, I would I would suggest that you pick pick the uh, the spinach um, beet um, sort of often. You know don't sort of don't sort of um, let it turn, grow too much because, uh, you know, as I say, the plant will want to to run to seed. And all you need to do is just grab the leaf, um, just just at, um, let me just pull that off. So you grab the leaf just at the uh, the end of the stem there, and then tear it off. So you can leave the stem on the plant. Um, that's not going to cause any problems. But uh, this is really a, a, a sort of marvelous vegetable to grow in your garden because it is one of the first. Um, greens really that you can pick. Um, obviously, you know you've got your brassicas, you've got the sort of winter cabbage, and you've got the um, sort of purple sprouting broccoli as well. But with um, spinach, it's a really good um, vegetable, particularly spinach beet, which is uh, which is actually part of the brassica family. And uh, because the more you pick it, the more it'll come. So it, uh, you know, it is a really good vegetable. And because of it got its roots down into the um, into the ground last year, then the um, you know you don't need to sort of water it or anything like that um, because it'll it'll have roots really low down, which will which will collect the uh, the water from the uh, the ground below. Now, whatever you do, don't be tempted to water it because that will most certainly encourage it to run to seed, and as soon as it's run to seed, the plant will die. So as I say, just keep picking at it like that. Pick off the largest leaves. Um, and you can um, basically just slice these up with a. Uh, I normally use a cleaver to, uh, like a meat cleaver to, to slice them up. I find that the easiest. And if you get the younger leaves, um, for example, um, that leaf, you can actually use that as um, salad in sandwiches, which we do quite often as well. So it's a it's a it's a vegetable which is very high in um, iron and all all sorts of vegetables. So it is really good. And it's uh, I find it's a vegetable. That's um, you know it's it's easy to get children to eat spinach. Um, all of my children uh, will eat will eat this. Um, whereas there are other vegetables that um, some of them um, don't um, you know sort of enjoy to eat too much. So uh, if you haven't already grown spinach, um, do try it this year because uh, this time next year you'll be enjoying a bountiful um, harvest which will which will basically keep you going. A row like I've got here, uh, um, like a double row that I've got here, will most certainly feed a family of five, um, you know, with absolutely no problems at all. So this year I'm going to have a go um, at growing ginger. Now I've never done this before, um, and basically what you need to do is get the, uh, the ginger just exactly like you see it in the shop. And these little sort of eyes here, you can see I've got two more there, um, here. They're the, they're the bits that are going to grow into the new plant. Obviously you've got one coming out there as well at the end. So what I've done is I've put a, um, like a dustbin at the end of the um, greenhouse between the two, uh, where the two um, grapevines come in. Now what I've done is I've filled this with a mixture of really well rotted compost. Um, so it's about a third rotted compost, it's a third um, topsoil from the garden and a third uh, potting compost which is the uh, the really fine um, sort of clover um, compost. Now what I'm going to do is plant 
in in here what I'm going to do is plant the um, the the ginger so that the as you can see as many of the um, you know the little shoots are facing uppermost and obviously some will come from the bottom so I'm just going to place that on the top like that um, as you can see here we've got three three down this side and there is actually one under there but I'm going to plant that sort of in in the ground like that um, and then I've got two smaller ones um, this, that's got a quite a big shoot there um, so I think I'm just going to plant that kind of like that so that's facing up and then the last one um, has got a shoot uh, where is it just coming out here so I'm just going to plant that one at the front there so I've, I've pushed them in and all I'm going to do now is just cover those with about uh, about four or five inches of uh, compost bring it up to about here and then I'm going to give them a really good water and I'm going to be growing these in the greenhouse um, obviously because the you know it's nice and warm in the greenhouse so they should grow well there so I'll, I'll show you how that gets on in the year this is the first time I've grown ginger so fingers crossed with this one I'm, I'm no expert at growing ginger but uh, I thought I'd give it a go because ginger is something that I do use in the kitchen so um, I'm going to plant these here like this and then I'll show you how it gets on in the year As the last few weeks of April have been quite dry, um, I would suggest if you've not had much rain, you do what I'm doing at the moment. Because I'm, I'm basically, uh, I've uh, left the sprinkler on the uh, the strawberries because it's at this time of year when the strawberries really do need, uh, you, you know, to have a really good watering. And you're much better off to, uh, you know, sort of water them with a sprinkler rather than, you know, sort of soaking them so that the so that the uh, the water can seep into the ground and uh, you, you know sort of properly feed the plant now if you look at the um the footage i put out um, um sort of last year you'll see that the strawberries were considerably um, sort of more advanced and this is basically because um you know we've had so little rain so far this month in uh, the center of england that uh, you know the plants aren't anywhere near as developed as really they should be at this time of year so to give them some water it'll really give them a boost Okay, so this is a um, hydrangea. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I've got these um, these little. Um, I'm not quite sure what they are, but this, if I if I sort of do that, they will come off. I don't know if you can see that. Now, they're they're obviously some kind of insect or mite or whatever. I'm not quite sure, but the a few of them seem to be absolutely covered in uh, um, these things, and they also seem to be. Um, sort of struggling a little bit so I don't know why or what these are I don't know if you've got um, any experience of these but if you do they kind of look like that underneath and on the top they're obviously quite quite well camouflaged so they look a bit like um, small um, wood light to be honest with you what they are I don't know but they seem to be feeding on the plant so what I've done is I've gone round and just made sure that I've sort of pushed them all off uh, but they've obviously been sort of laid on here uh, by something or other and uh, the the leaves have sort of gone a bit it looks like I've got a bit of an aphid problem as well but um, these were doing really well but unfortunately a couple of them look quite uh, you know sort of look quite ill at the minute I've put them outside um, as you can see um, this one here was affected um, and this one was affected by them I've knocked them off I can't see any more on these others but um, you know, I've, I've been around and checked, and if I've seen any, I've just knocked them off with my finger. Um, really, don't know what they are. If you do know, please put a comment below so I can uh, try and deal with them a bit better. But I've never seen them before. I'll have a bit of a research on the internet, but uh, I'm not quite sure what the others. Another couple there, look. So uh, do let me know if you've uh, had experience of these. Okay, so it's time to put the first lot of peas in, and what I typically do is grow peas every um, about every three weeks. And I'm growing two varieties this year. The first one is from Sutton's, and these are Hurst Green Shaft, um, the variety. Uh, the next one I'm growing from Morgan and Thomas, and these are called um, Cleverdon Wonder. Um, most varieties of peas, you know, you can get uh, two different types of peas really. Some that sort of grow. Um, to sort of sort of three foot high, and others grow sort of you know considerably higher than that, sort of you know up to six seven foot high. 
like you know more like runner beans now what I always do is grow these in um, guttering now as you can see I've got two lengths of guttering here and um, this is just bog standard um, guttering that you get on the side of houses and what I always do is fill fill the uh, the guttering up and you want basically uh, to put in in the guttering around well almost almost to an inch or so off the top of the guttering and what you can do is uh, put put something at the end just to block you know just to stop it from washing out at the end when you water them but um, what I tend to do is uh, you can get a, um, a plant pot or something like that at the end just to stop the earth from coming out. Now the reason I'm putting it into uh, guttering, and this is this is an old trick, this is most certainly uh, used by quite a few gardeners. Uh, what you can do is you start them off in the greenhouse in the in the guttering, and then after they've developed, uh, or at least they've started, when they get to about sort of three or four inches high, what you do is you put them outside from then on. Um, so basically, start them off in in the uh, the guttering. And then what you do is water the water the guttering really well, get it really wet, and then just by tilting it up you can slide them into the ground. So you make a bit of a trough in the ground, and then slide the slide the um, the peas out of this guttering onto the ground, and then obviously they're surrounded by compost, so they're going to grow away really well. And this is a really good way of starting the uh, the peas off. Now, as you can see, I've now filled the two troughs with. Uh, compost and I'm using a, a reasonably fine compost here this is the clover compost that uh, I've been managed to, managed to get this year which I've been really impressed with to be honest with you and what you can do is you can uh, you can soak the seeds uh, in um, in sort of some water or something like that uh, I'll just see if I've got a tree so I can put them in but if you can see the seeds uh, like dried peas basically that's exactly what they are and what you what you want to do is is plant these I'll do it here so you can sorry where I'm about here so you can actually see what I'm doing and what I'm doing is I'm planting them and what I've what I've found over the years is you plant them in like a zigzag formation and basically the seeds are around two inches apart maybe slightly more um, and you do get lots of seeds in the packet so you know don't be you're much better off with more than less to be honest with you so the seeds end up being about two inches apart and what I'll actually do is when I when I put these in the ground these two rows will actually go together side by side um, and the as soon as you've got the uh, sorry as soon as you've got them in I'll, I'll, I'll put these two in exactly like they are with about um, six inches between the, the two, sort of two rows, and then these two sets of peas will then grow up the same sticks. So this will this will create about sort of five or six foot of um, peas, and then as soon as I put these in the ground, I'm going to repeat this same process again um, in these um, gutters, and then after that, I'll be planting them directly into the ground later on in the year. But what this will actually do it will give me a succession of peas during the year. Now peas are the most um, the most nutritional um, vegetable of all. Um, you know if you if you eat no other vegetables eat peas because uh, they really are full of vitamins and uh, and all sorts of goodness so you know if your children won't eat any other vegetable make sure they eat peas and if they don't like the taste of peas then hide them in other things so you can you can, um, you know, peas are very versatile um, vegetable. You know, you can you can hide them in all sorts of dishes. You know, just put a few in there. You know, if you're making a, a shepherd's pie or something like that, then put some peas in, peas in the shepherd's pie, or uh, you know anything like that. If you're making a spaghetti bolognese, there's no reason why you can't put some peas in there as well. But uh, they they are really nutritious, very good for you, um, and. Uh, you know, always, always try to eat peas, and they are most certainly the best fresh off the plants. Now, my children basically, these peas will never make it to the kitchen because what happens is my children come up the garden and they'll go straight to the pea plants and pick them all off and eat them, which is exactly what I want them to do. Um, so, 
you know, these these peas will probably never see the kitchen too much with you because they're they can't have eaten before they even get to the kitchen. So I'm just going to put a bit of, and they really are nice sort of garden treats if you like. So um, as you're walking around the garden, pick yourself a couple of pea pods and eat them whilst you're walking around doing other stuff. So I've put in probably probably about a hundred or so. Uh, well, perhaps not that many. Uh, no, it's, pretty, it's probably probably going for 100 peas now. So, you know, make sure you've got plenty of peas. Um, and I always buy the peas at the end of the season because that's when they're most certainly the cheapest. Now, these two packets of seeds I've shown you, um, I bought these at the back end of last year for 20 pence from a garden centre because garden centres always sell off the seeds at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, when I mean, they were originally £2.75, which is still good value for the amount of seeds that you get. I mean, in, in each packet you get in uh, probably about two, 200 seeds in each one, which is more than enough for two or three sowings. Now, don't sow too many in one go. Don't be tempted to put loads and loads in, because what you want to do is you most certainly want a succession of pea plants, um, you know, as you go through the season. So, really, you know, this is, this is really more than enough for the first sowing. Now, as soon as you put them all in, as I've as I've as I've done there, I'll just quickly take the camera up so you can see. So you can see there the peas, you know, like a kind of zigzaggy pattern. As soon as you've done that, um, what you want to do then is just with a bit more compost, fill the fill the trays up to the top. So what, what's going to end up happening is the peas are going to be about two centimetres or so below the. Uh, below the level. Now I'm, I'm, I'm literally filling the um, I'm literally filling the the uh, the gutters right up to the top. The one thing I was going to explain is what you can do is you can soak the peas before you put them in. So a day or so before you intend to plant them, what you can do is just put them in a jam jar or in a bowl, cover them with water, and you'll find that the peas will swell and they'll germinate that much quicker. However, if you do that. Um, they are a little bit more difficult to put out like this um, and what I find, to be honest with you, is it's actually easier to do this and these are all going to come through anyway. Make sure you've patted it all down like that so they're nice and firm and I'll just finish off this bit in a moment. Now as soon as you've done this all you need to do is basically water the entire lot with a rose, give them a really good soaking, uh, make sure you've got something blocking the ends off so it doesn't wash out over the sides and uh, these peas will come up in the next uh, couple of weeks and I'll be putting them out as I say I'll probably put these outside in about uh, two or three weeks as soon as they're as soon as they're about um, sort of three or four inches high if not before I'll plant these outside and um, I'll do exactly the same thing in the greenhouse again um, and then I'll, I'll put them out and then everything from there on in I'll just plant directly into the ground because they'll germinate okay in the ground. So that's putting the peas in for this year. One tip that I can give you about digging, um, most certainly if it's where your brassicas have been, is to um, actually dig sideways. I find that I have considerably less um, backache after digging if you dig sideways. So as you can see, rather than digging like this and pulling it towards me, what I'm doing is putting the spade in. Um, at the side like that and you can just turn it like that and as you can see you know you can you can go through get the weeds out uh, just as you would do normally but by pushing it forward sorry to the side what you're doing is you can put the spade in like that just take about four inches at a time and then with both arms you can push down and I find that that is a much easier way of digging than uh, trying to kind of do it like that because you're pulling, you're pulling the ground towards you and you're also bending down where if you do it sideways you don't actually bend so much uh, and you're using both arms to pull the, uh, the spade or the shovel down. So, so the spade or the fork down. Now if you're digging ground where your brassicas have been, the ground is going to be quite um, hard so particularly if you haven't had much rain like we've had over the past few weeks. So what I would suggest you do is use your spade because I've, in the years gone by, I've managed to break forks doing it 
um, this time of year. So if you use your spade, or even if you do use a fork, don't take off too much at a time, don't be tempted, um, just take off um, sort of four inches at a time. And then you can just hit it with a spade like that and you'll find when it's nice and dry, the ground will just disintegrate. Um, obviously you can go over it with the rotor vector to a later point, but just by hitting it with the spade, you'll, you'll break the ground down into a nice, fine tilt. So I've just taken off the, uh, the last bit of purple sprouting broccoli and don't, don't let the, uh, the tops go to waste. If you've got chickens, um, all you need to do is pull them out of the ground and uh, put them all together with a bit of ba um, baling twine. Make like a, a, a loop and then sort of tie them up in your chicken hut. And the chickens will rifle through these and uh, eat all the tops off, um, which is obviously all goodness for you because it, it, that'll go into the eggs. So I'll just do that now. See a bit of life from the uh, the sage, but unfortunately, I think uh, I think this plant's uh, not going to come back to life this year. So, as sage isn't a, um, a herb I use that much anyway, I'm not uh, overly concerned, as I've said in previous videos. So, basically, this is going to come out, and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to plant in here the uh, um, the herbs that I've grown this year, the thyme and the marjoram. So, basically, all I'm going to do is just get this root out. As you can see, it's quite woody. There's absolutely no sign of life in there at all. So uh, I'll just dispose of this root. Um, and what I'm going to do is, herbs don't particularly like um, rich soil. But what I'm going to do is just quickly turn this, this, this ground over. I'm going to sweeten it up with a little bit of uh, uh, compost. Get out all the roots. There's a bit of grass here. A bit of twitch grass. So what I'm going to do is just loosen this soil up like this. Um, Turn it over, make sure it's, uh, it's nice and loose so they can, the new herbs can get their, their roots in. And uh, I'll plant the marjoram and the thyme. Um, this, there's a bit of, bit of mint here, so what I'll do is I'll transplant, uh, I'll transplant this bit of mint over to the other side. Uh, this is actually, uh, I can tell from the smell, this is actually cat mint. So uh, what I might actually do Let's just pop that in here. So we'll just make a quick hole here. And just put that straight back in there. And at this time of the year, um, it won't mind its roots being disturbed. And um, that'll soon re-establish itself over there. So uh, I'll start coming to all. Mint is very, uh, um, a very invasive um, plant. It tends to grow all over the place, so I'm not too concerned here because it's in a narrow border, surrounded by path and uh, and fence. So I don't, you know, I'm not too concerned that it's going to go everywhere. But if you are going to plant some in your garden or in your your allotment, what I would suggest you do is do like I've done with the comfrey and put it in some kind of pipe or a large pot sunk in the ground. Otherwise, you'll find that it's spreading all around your allotment. Okay, so now I've dug that out and got all the roots out. I'm just going to pour some uh, potting compost in there. This is the fine uh, clover potting compost. I'm just going to make sure that the, the whole kind of surface is covered. And what I'm going to do is just basically work that into the ground. I don't really need to go too deep for this because basically what I'm trying to do is just make sure I've got a moisture retentive um, surface. Herbaceous plants typically like uh, dry um, conditions, they don't particularly like it too well. So uh, this is really just to get them started. So what I'm going to do now is just get my hands in there, make sure it's nicely mixed up. To be honest with you, for a gardener, these are definitely the best tools. Obviously make sure you've got no um, sharpness in the, uh, the ground. Now because these plants have been in the greenhouse, uh, what I'm going to be doing, as soon as I've planted them, um, what I'm going to be doing is placing some glass between here and here. 
to form like a, a bit of a clush just to try and protect them a little bit. So now I've got the ground pretty much level and obviously this will settle down then we'll probably drop about two or three inches after the uh, um, after the ground starts to compact back in. So now that's all nicely mixed and all broken up. Okay so going in here we've got um, three different um, herbs. We've got some uh, we've got some thyme, which is what we've grown in the green as you've seen before. And I've got uh, two trays of that. Um, I've got some basil, which is these two. I've um, got some marjoram. And I've got another type of um, basil. This is, the, this is the larger leaf type. This is, this is good in salad and stuff like that. So basically I've got, um, I've got three herbs, but there's, there's, there's two varieties of the basil. So what I'm going to be doing is growing these in sort of four clumps. So the first, the first clump I'll put in the thyme, and basically just by squeezing the sides of the pot, you'll release it, turn it upside down. Obviously, try to try not to damage the plant. And just with my hands, I'm just going to loosely put that into the ground. I know you can't see, but I'll show you after with the. Uh, um, I'll show you afterwards when I've, when I've finished. And I'm planting these about six inches apart. Um, you know, the ground is quite loose, so you know, these will be able to establish the, uh, the roots quite quickly. So I'm going to put these in a sort of a square, if you like, uh, making sure I've got the, the label in there so I know what it is. Um, and the other one of these is here. So this is why it's nice to grow them in these little modules, because what you can do is then I'm going to spread them out a little bit, and obviously I've got eight, eight different ones. Um, I'll just put these at the back. And basically I'll just continue to do this with um, the other four herbs in exactly the same way. And I'll show you in a moment when I've got all that in. So that's them in the ground. I've just put a piece of wood in the bottom here just to support the glass and put the glass out so that will protect them from, um, for, you know, if we do have any um, sudden frost. I've also put some um, slug pallets down because slugs do like um, the tender leaves of um, herbaceous plants, particularly these ones. So um, I've left the, the sides open so that, uh, you know, you do get a, you know, some uh, air running through so we don't get any uh, mould or anything like that. But uh, that's the... Uh, that's the herbs and I'll leave the glass there for a couple of weeks just till it gets established. So just moving on down the plot, um, as you can see this really needs sorting out now. The, uh, the chives are really coming on. Um, I showed you the asparagus in the last video, the comfrey's doing really well. Um, I've moved the cages over to here for, for now whilst I'm watering the strawberries because it's a bit difficult water there. Um, I'll be putting these um, fruit trees in very shortly as soon as I've got the rest of the potatoes in. Uh, you've seen the spinach on a previous clip. Um, I've been digging this bit over here um, to put the last two rows of potatoes in there and obviously there'll be a row there where the spinach is as soon as that comes out. Uh, I've put some more onions in. Um, I've now got uh, 480 of the, of the white onions in and um, there's some um, onions that are grown from seed on that that, that kind of row there as well. Uh, nothing's happened in the the tunnels this week really. I'll be putting the um, the, uh, the the broccoli in there very shortly. Um, the obviously the parsnips and the yet that'll come through. But look at the difference with the uh, the rhubarb. The rhubarb's really come on. I've put these two bins in um, to uh, to draw the uh, the rhubarb out. Um, and that's the allotment um, as it is at the moment. So I hope this episode of Jim's Allotment Garden has been of some use to you. Please do put any comments, um, any questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And thank you to all of the new subscribers, well, all of the subscribers full stop. I, I appreciate your support with the channel. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Allotment Garden.